This video will discuss the PDB file format. So the PDB or Protein Data Bank file format, that's a standard file format for biological macromolecules and lots of other kind of standard inputs for molecular modeling packages. So just as with XYZ, we have whatever our file name is with typically the same kinds of restrictions. You usually don't want spaces, backslashes, or special characters file name dot pdb for the extension of it and the, one of the main differences between pdb and xyz in a lot of cases is that for many of the pdb formats um, they are what are called column specific so all of these records which we're going to discuss in a second they have to fall they have to fall in the exact column number in the line so for example this might be columns 30 through 35 or 37 through 42. And if you move this to where this is column 36 instead of column 37, a lot of older programs won't interpret that correctly and your program will have an error. So many of the programs which uh, read in these as their inputs were often written uh, in the early days of molecular modeling in perhaps the 1970s or 80s or early 90s where uh, you have that column specific requirement to them. Okay, so I mentioned this uh, Protein Data Bank is the name of the file format, and that comes from the website where a lot of these come from, where researchers will deposit crystal structures or other kinds of structures they find on this uh, PDB website, rcsb.org. And then on here you can search for various uh, PDB structures, so they usually have four-letter abbreviations like 1HSG. So I'm going to go to that one, <clears throat> if that'll load fairly quickly here. All right, so 1-HSG is the uh, HIV-2 protease protein, if this is going to load for me. All right, this is the exciting uh, aspects of live recording. Okay, so P I'm going to look for display files, PDB format. That's going to bring up another file for me, and this is the actual PDB file which I can download if I like over here on the download files section. Okay, so then we have a bunch of stuff here and we're gonna discuss what these types of things mean right now. Okay, so in these PDB files, you'll see lots of what are called records. So these records have headers. Um, the first symbol or the first string in a line is usually something like, you know, header, title, compound, atom, heteroatom, those sorts of things. Yeah, there we go. So those, those indicate what type of record follow on the following line, but the most interesting records for our purposes are going to be atom records. So they're going to start with the word atom. So in this case, there are about 1,600 of those in this particular file. So this 1-HSG, uh, this HIV-2 protease, that if I load this on VMD, which we discuss in some videos to follow, is a whole protein which looks like this. You can see some side chains there, uh, tryptophan, you know, there's another one, uh, uh, arginine. So uh, lots of uh, different residues we see in this protein with its about 2,000 atoms there. Okay, so what is it that um, the program is being told by each of these atom records? So we have the second column being the atom number, starting from one and going up from there. The third column, the atom type. So what type of atom is this? Um, is this the uh, beta carbon? Is it in the backbone? Is it a part of an amide bond? These labels tell you what kind of uh, atom you are within whatever residue you are. Next column being the residue, things from biochemistry like whether you're a proline or a glycine, uh, maybe for nucleic acids these that have res names like adenine or thymine. So what type of uh, repeating unit you're in in your macromolecule, uh, what chain you're in. Sometimes proteins have multiple different chains of kind of distinct uh, connections of amino acids. Uh, residue number, so what 
amino acid are you within your specific chain? You know, so maybe this protein we're looking at has 100 amino acids. So number one, number two, etc. Then we have the Cartesian coordinates, which are the same types of information we had in our previous, our previous video on XYZ files. So again, a floating point number on our uh, XYZ coordinates. Typically, the units there are going to be in angstroms. All right, we have a value called the occupancy factor, which comes from the crystallography, kind of what fraction of the time is the, is the atom at this particular location. Maybe you have some different conformers and maybe half the time it's here and half the time it's in a different place. There you might see two records for the same atom, but they each have an occupancy factor of say 0.5, 50%, or maybe 30%. Uh, those can vary as well. If it's a high resolution crystal structure with a single uh, kind of major conformation, most of your occupancies are pretty much going to be one. All right, then we give a factor called the beta factor, which I discussed on here, and that is related to the average displacement of our atom. So beta, you might remember, is kind of related to temperature in statistical mechanics. So uh, the higher or in this case, what we have is the higher beta, the greater uncertainty in the position of our atom relative to these coordinates. So this beta value is 8 pi squared times the average displacement in the crystal structure away from this particular location. So in a crystal structure, these coordinates are usually averages, and then beta tells you how far each of our coordinates on average is going to deviate away from that value. And then lastly, our last column, the element. So is this a carbon, a nitrogen, oxygen, hydrogen, etc. cetera? Uh, so this column plus these three are the information you would get from an XYZ file. And PDB files being so rich in data give us a whole bunch more information so that in our molecular modeling programs, we can do things like render them in all kinds of different special formats like maybe some kind of ribbon structure, maybe some kind of, what's the other one I'm looking for? Not sure, ribbon, no, that's what I was looking for. What's the one that has all these different connections to it? All right, don't remember at the moment, let's just leave it at that, okay. So the extra information in the PDB file allows you to do all kinds of different specialized renderings of the protein or whatever other kind of macro molecule that you have. All right, so that is a basic introduction to the PDB protein databank file format, which you'll frequently see used to represent the structures of large biological macromolecules.